I had a hard time doing this video for the simple fact that every time I, I draw something, my drawing process changes slightly. So it was actually very difficult for me to explain how I do stuff because I never did that. I never had to explain anybody the random mess that my drawing process is. So I hope this will be clear enough for you guys. And if it isn't, I'm sorry. Feel free to ask questions in the comment anyways. I thought the best thing I could do was to make a general guide on how I draw and my general process so then we could focus on details such as skin, eyes and overpainting in the next tutorials. So grab a bag of your favorite snack because this will be a long ass video of me trying to explain the total mess that my drawing process is. First things first, I want to give you guys some specifics such as my tablet, programs, brushes and stuff. Up until a month ago I used a Cintiq 13 HD as my tablet and just recently switched to a Cintiq 22 and I've been using Paint Tools High version 1 all along. Before you ask, I don't know, I have absolutely no idea how to translate my brushes which are for the first version of Paint Tools High into the second one, so please don't ask because I don't know. I really don't know. These, however, are my brushes for my sketching, my liner and my painting and coloring brush. I use that for basically everything and the basic pen tool on pen tool side. I don't really use custom brushes, these are the basic ones that you get with Paint Tool Side version 1, so I think you can obtain the same effect with any other brush or your preferred ones. My general rule is hard brush for sketching and soft brush for line art. My canvases of course don't have a prefix size as I can draw horizontal vertically, but most of them tend to have the longest side of the canvas to be 2500 pixel wide and to have a 300 dpi in quality. Whenever you download a new drawing program that's not meant for professional use, so that's not an Adobe or Photoshop program and it's not Clip Studio, it will probably have a basic DPI number which is 72, which is the DPI that Google Images use, so it's pretty low. If you want to obtain a better quality for your art, I suggest to put your DPI, which is dot per inch, to at least 300, which is the printing quality that many printing services use. And even if you don't plan on printing your art ever, that's a good quality for your art as a standard. I would go definitely higher, but it kind of depends on how much your PC can handle. Illustrations like the one that you will see in the speed paint usually take me between 8 or 15 hours, depending on my mood, if I have other stuff in between, if I like the art, if I like the sketch, if I feel comfortable in my chair and stuff. So now that we have the important stuff out of the way, let's start with the tutorial. First thing you want to do is of course wanting to draw. It doesn't matter if you have an idea or not, if you want to draw you will find one, even a simple one. If I already have an idea that's no issue at all because I will start doodling and thumbnailing and doing tiny little sketches to fix the idea on paper and that will help me with a bigger sketch later. If I don't have an idea, I will go scroll maybe my favorite artist art or look at speed paint that will give me some inspiration. In both cases, however, I will go and look for references, which you can find on Pinterest, Google or whatever. I highly recommend looking for photos rather than art, simply because if you're looking for a pose, for example, or are looking for anatomical help on your posing, a photo will probably help you more than somebody's sketch or art, which is, even in the slightest, subjected to stylistic choices. Plus, you don't risk on getting too much inspiration from the art you're getting, and you will respect the artist and everybody is happy. Unfortunately, I didn't record my sketch in progress because this video wasn't really planned to be recorded for the for the tutorial, so I'm sorry, but my general sketching phases are draw a little thumbnail, try some various tiny stickman poses, then pick one and make the bigger sketch. I usually sketch a couple times, one for the very rough sketch and then for the for the second one, which is more refined, but I don't add, absolutely do not add all the details right in the sketch because I will lose my focus most of the time and I will have a mental breakdown. 
After the sketching process, there is, of course, our good friend line art. Sometimes I will enjoy line art and take my time with it, like in this case where I enjoy drawing details, hair, and vary the sizes of my brush to give more depth here and there. Some other times I will absolutely hate doing line art and I will do like a refined sketch of some sort, especially because usually at the final step of my art I will do overpainting, which allows me to get back on my line art and fix it and paint over it basically so it just disappears and you can see the flows. I do my line art in three different layers and each one of these layers has a different brush size. The face layer, for example, is the one with the medium brush size. Medium because the brush I use for my line art is pretty soft, so I don't want the face to have blurry edges, but I also don't want to have very hard edges, and I like the liner to be a bit softer on the face, especially on the cheeks, so I would probably go even lighter with my hand on the cheeks area. Then I go on the second layer where I do my hair and I usually use the smallest brush and on the third layer with usually a 20 pixel wide brush I go with the rest of the body. My general rule for line art will be important stuff has a thicker line art and details have of course a thinner one. My art usually has what we call rim light, which means it doesn't really have a specific light source. So I don't use the technique of doing line art in the parts that are supposed to be in the shadow thicker, while the ones that are supposed to be in the light thinner. But many people use this technique instead to give more depth and thickness to the line art. This really depends on what you prefer. You can also add the tiny black spots on parts that are supposed to be darker on the art. For example, I like to add that under the neck, between the legs, or on some part of the hair. That's really just up to you, honestly. When the hair hole that is liner is finished, I go of course with the base color and that's pretty much self-explanatory. I just pick my reference, put the colors and that's it. This is where I start to define light and shadows. For example, I add some gradients on the hair. On the top, they will be, of course, lighter. And off the bottom, I will go like one shade darker. In this case, the character had short hair, so I didn't have to add much of a gradient on the hair. But you can see I put a lighter spot on the top because supposedly light was coming from the top right. And even if I didn't add much ambient shading after I kept the idea of light coming from the top. I will usually color the background in the stage. Sometimes, if I'm not really in the mood of doing the background at that moment, I will do it after I color the character in. Especially if it's um, something that doesn't really need to blend with the character. For example, in this case, it was a single wall and a pavement, so I didn't really need to do it right away to set the mood of the picture, I could just do it whenever I wanted. So I focused on the character first and then just tried to color in some spots on the background. And this, this is where it gets tricky for me to explain because this part is the thing that changes the most usually when I draw. Whenever I draw, I try to do something new be it a single part of the drawing, like hair or lighting, or just change my whole process. And lately, in the last months, I've been trying to paint more. What does it mean? It means that before I used to draw with overlay and multiply layers a lot for the shading, and lately I've just been using like one layer coloring. This, however, changes between picture and picture. For example, when my art doesn't have any specific mood or ambience, unlike in this case, I just go and paint because I just need to pick darker version of the base color and I just go with the moment, I just go and color. <laughs> but for example, in this case, the shading on the wall and on some part of the character were made by multiply layers, especially in purple because I used our rim light for the character, but then I wanted to add some ambience on it. So I used purple and blue and greens to enhance the shadows that I already did. Generally, I just make a new layer, pick up 
very thick brush and I try to um, try to guess the colors that I want to use for the shading. As I said, I don't use multiply, so I have to rely on my color knowledge, which is not really often accurate, honestly. But most often I follow the rule of the first lighter and softer shading layer, which is usually also the, the most saturated one. For example, in this case, I had a white skirt and I started with a um, lighter and more bluish uh, first shading layer. And then I painted the darker parts with a grayish blue. This is because lately I prefer to give a more natural look to my shading rather than what I used to do before, which was doing a very, very saturated um, shading, usually using purples and blues, and then using an overlay of screen layers in light blue or pastel purple to make the spots lighter, which resulted in a very vibrant and colorful shading. But lately I prefer to make the first layer the most saturated one, and then I like to go darker and more on the grayish side for a bit more realistic and neutral uh, shading type. I also like to have uh, lots of contrast in my art, so I will go extremely dark on blacks and dark colors and extremely light on pastels or maybe white, for example. I tend to add less shading on light colors and more shading on darker ones. Many people are scared to paint on one layer, but it's really just doing cell shading with a softer brush. It's easy, it's fun, it doesn't really require too much color comprehension. You just have to go bonkers and try colors. If they look good, you keep them. If they don't look good, you change them. That's what I live by. Keep in mind, I never studied any color theory. I just watched a couple videos. So this is definitely not something that you can only do if you are a professional. You just go and try. If you don't know how shading works or how materials works, like in this case, I didn't know how to do the shading on the on the shoes, for example, because I never shaded lucid shoes, very shiny shoes. So I picked the reference on Google. I tried for Lolita shoes. I tried to recreate the effect that the leather had on the the string, on the sole, on the whole shoe, <laughs> and that's it. That's what came out. Again, I'm not really very precise in the sketch. I tend to give a general appeal to the peak. I try to set the shading, but I don't really go in detail, except for the hair that I'm very picky about. So hair and shading on the skin, especially, or the eyes, it's something that I really, really care about. So I will spend most of the time doing that and leave some space for clothing, legs, which I almost don't shade. Uh, and focus maybe on aspects that I like more. Nobody's going to tell you how you have to make your art. So if you like to shade eyes, take your time and do your eyes. If you don't like to shade hair, leave them be. Do whatever you want. <laughs> Whenever I finish and I look somehow satisfied, I go and color my liner. This is very, very important, especially if you want to achieve a softer look. I seriously don't know how many people leave their liner black and still make the art look good. When I leave my liner black, my art looks weird, extremely weird. I don't know if it's just my technique or maybe I don't use um, a fair size for my liner uh, comparable to my style. I, I have no idea, but I hate that it looks terrible. Whenever I look at my art with black liner, I kind of want to throw it out. So I lock the transparency of the liner layer and I just first pick a very dark brown or purple and color the whole liner and then I go and light it up with some base color. For example, on the skin, I will pick the color of the skin in a darker shade and play with the line on the jaw, on the nose, on the mouth and kind of make it softer in some way. There is not a specific rule on how to do this. You just go and see if it looks good. I like to keep it very visible. I don't like to go extra soft on the liner because I, I like liner B. 
the invisible on the art and I don't want it to disappear especially because I will paint over it after so I don't want it to be too light because it will kind of be a guide for where I have to fix stuff and where I have to cover, where I have to reinforce the liner so the picture looks neater, clearer and better in general. Overpainting is a process that many people are afraid of because they don't want to paint over the finished picture, they are scared to ruin something, but you have to keep in mind that you don't really have to do that on a single layer, you don't have to paint uh, like in real life, you don't have one try. You can add multiple layers, that's the beauty of digital art, you can erase without any trace of what you did. And that's what I like to do. I usually do overpainting on a single layer or a couple layers over the finished picture. Sometimes I don't I don't even merge the liner with the with the base colors because I can always fix the liner before overpainting and see if I can still fix something before going over it with the color. It generally doesn't happen because if I go to overpainting it means that I'm satisfied with what I have. But if you see something that doesn't really look good anatomically and you don't want to fix it directly with color, you can keep your liner and you can always get back to it. With overpainting, I usually go with a very thick brush, a, a big one, because I don't like to make my stuff disappear. And I think since you're going to paint over something that is going to be shaded and have a general soft looking to it, I want to use a bigger brush because they tend to be softer. I tend to go lighter with my hand and it doesn't have hard edges. It will probably look more natural as well. So what do you do in overpainting? You just fix stuff. For example, I like to go over the hair. I want to add more, more streaks, more light, more shadow, add tiny bits of black where the hair is supposed to meet with each other. I want to reinforce the line art and make it kind of darker where hair is supposed to meet on the forehead or on the outer lines of the characters and make it kind of lighter and softer where hair meets the face, for example, on the nose and eyes area. I like to paint over eyes a lot, over eyelashes, they look way more detailed and they, I kind of want them to pop out of the art. I will go over clothing a lot, especially on the liner part and make it a bit darker because as I mentioned at the start of the video, I tend to go with a softer brush and a bigger brush for my clothing and for the rest of the body. And when I color in the liner, it tends to disappear a lot and I still want it to be visible so I go over it a whole bunch of times. And in this step I usually add tiny details that I didn't add at all or that I only sketched in the initial part of the art, such as earrings, piercings, tiny details, if I have tiny cables, for example, for charms, if I have laces, if I have pearls or tiny diamonds and strasses, things like this. And after overpainting is finished, I just go straight to add a couple overlays, fix a bit of the color and then I will go straight to editing. I do my editing in GIMP, GIMP, however you pronounce it, but I also used to do it in Clip Studio. I just find it easier to do it in GIMP and it basically has the same assets and options. So uh, it's easy to understand, it's not pay to use and it's great, I love it. What I do is just make the art a little bit sharper. I add a tiny bit of grain or noise, depending on the art really, not every time, but most of the time I do on overlay, of course. And the most important thing that you could ever do is color fix your art. Especially if you have a background of some sort or if you have many colors, fix your colors. Fix your colors curves. It's very, very important. And it's not difficult at all. It just goes by taste, but whatever thing you do will look better. Believe me. As mentioned before, I like a lot of contrast in my art, so I tend to make the darker parts of the art even darker and the black will be extremely black. And I kind of tend to do a zigzag with the light and shadow curves, if that makes sense. I go up and down, up and down, and it usually makes the trick. Like, it, it really makes the difference. And of course, I fix the other color channels as well, the green, the red, and the blue. Or was it like 
red, magenta, I don't know, who cares? You just fix the colors. Of course, duplicate the art before you start so you won't lose the original picture. And when I have a satisfying result, I just add my watermark and that's it. That's finished. I'm sorry if this was kind of a mess, I just don't know what I'm doing when I draw. So I hope this was helpful, at least for some of you. And if you have any question, please feel free to ask below. I will be very, very happy to respond. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you guys very soon.